A few days ago, my colleague and I, were having an intense conversation, about metamorphosis. And, he told me some things, that completely changed my view of this process of transformation, while also leaving me mildly traumatized. Heads up, it's a grisly process. To become a butterfly, the caterpillar digests itself. Essentially turning itself into a goopy soup. But groups of cells survive, rearranging themselves into eyes, wings, antennae, etc. Who would have thought butterflies could be so metal? Are you wondering why I chose to start today's show with this anecdote? Well, it's because today, we're going to explore a cool, novel theory about the moon's formation, called Synestia, and uncannily enough, it mirrors a butterfly's metamorphosis. Orbit. Beyond the Blue. To understand Synestia, we need to go all the way back. Oh, we went too far back. Let's fast forward a little, to the formation of our solar system. So that's about 4.5 billion years ago. Yes, right there. This phase can best be summed up in four words, things were, extremely, chaotic. Our early solar system, was packed with planets and debris, and constant collisions. These destructive events, which were driven by gravity, aided into shaping, and molding our solar system, into what it currently looks like today. This brings us to an early Earth and Moon. And how they formed. For decades, astronomers have been trying to figure out the answers to two important questions. One, how did our gorgeous neighbor come to be? And two, why are Earth and Moon composed of such similar material? The long-standing theory of Moon formation, has been the giant impact hypothesis. In this model, Proto-Earth suffered a collision with a Mars-sized planet called Thea. According to this hypothesis, the impact caused Thea's material to be ejected out, and the Moon formed from Thea's material that was expelled. Although this hypothesis answers our first question, it doesn't answer the second one. If the Moon did form from Thea's debris, it shouldn't have such a strikingly similar composition to Earth's. So, scientists, Sarah Stewart and Simon Locke, proposed an alternative theory. Synestia. Here's what it says. Our early Earth, or proto-Earth, used to spin much, much faster than it now does. As it spun without a care in the world, it had a cataclysmic encounter with another planet, Thea, that was also spinning like it didn't give a damn. The collision had such a high momentum, that 10% of the Earth's rock was vaporized, and the rest became liquefied. And boom! The Synestia was formed. A giant space donut of molten, and gaseous material. As the giant space donut was also spinning at such high speeds, it had an outward bulge. Inside the hot cloud of Synestia, blobs of molten rock started clumping together. This was thanks to gravity. And soon these clumps started snowballing into much bigger rocks. There may even have been two little moons, that joined together, to form the moon as we know it. At the same time, the greater bulk of the Synestia, which would later become our planet Earth, began shrinking as it cooled down. The vaporized rock, and metal cooled, down, and condensed into the center, in the form of lava. Hence, the core of lava at Earth's center. As the Synestia's hot gases pulled back, a fledgling, little liquid moon emerged from the mists. Kind of like a little baby bird, sitting on the edge of its nest, right before it spreads its wings, and makes its first flight. And to think that all this happened within just a century. That's like the cosmic blink of an eye. Unlike the giant impact hypothesis, Synestia answers both our questions. It explains why the Earth and Moon are so similar in composition, 
it's because they were formed from the same material. Just like the caterpillar, our moon was able to experience a sort of rebirth, in a cocoon of its own debris. This solves two mysteries, why our moon and earth have such similar makeup, and how the moon came to be. But, our moon is not devoid of mysteries. There's a dearth of unanswered questions about moon that still loom, and plague our astronomers. And, good news. One of them was just answered. A previously unseen mystery, about why the sides of the moon are so unique, has been solved by new research. Our moon has two distinct faces. Namely, near side, and far side. Since our moon is tidally locked to the earth, it rotates at a speed, that keeps only one face pointing toward us as it orbits. The near side. But what did the far side go through? Why does it look like it was just run over with a giant steam roller? And then beaten up with giant hammers? For the answer to that, we will have to fast forward a little bit from the Sinistia phase to about 4.3 billion years ago, when an ancient asteroid crash hit Moon. The force of the impact was so powerful, that it caused havoc on the Moon's mantle. The collision altered the shape of Earth's natural satellite, resulting in an irregular balance, between both the side visible from the globe, and the side that remains hidden. The impact caused the formation of the Moon's massive South Pole Aitken Basin, which is believed to be the second largest impact crater, in our solar system. The first largest being an unnamed scar on the surface of Mars. The catastrophic asteroid hit, also generated a massive cloud of smoke of heat, which spread throughout the lunar interior. The collision was so big that it changed the face of Earth's natural satellite, creating an uneven balance between the side visible to us from the planet, and the other that remains hidden. While the near side is dominated by the vast, dark-colored remnants of ancient lava flows, the far side is packed with craters, and virtually devoid of large-scale lava flows. The last Apollo mission took place in 1972. In the half a decade since, we've launched robotic spacecrafts, and giant space telescopes across our solar system, and farther, to learn about distant worlds. And yet, scientists, and laymen like me, continue to ponder about the rocky visitor to our night sky. As NASA's Artemis missions prepare to send men, and women, to the moon by 2024, he is hoping we learn a lot more about Luna and its enigma, but what do I know? Beyond the Blue